After eight years, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has finalized their picks for a post-quantum cryptography suite. As we've discussed on the rundown before, NIST has been working on an encryption uh, system that's more difficult for quantum computers to defeat, theoretically. While the candidate names were awesomely named Kyber, Dilithium, and Sphinx, the NIST process is giving them boring numbers like FIPS 2000, or 203 and 204. These standards use a concept known as lattice cryptography, which was rumored to be vulnerable to quantum attacks, but survived and is incorporated into the standard. Tom, uh, I know that you're not a quantum expert, but I know that you've done a lot of looking into this. What's your opinion on these uh, FIPS uh, encryption standards? It's about time that we've had these because everyone knows that the government works um, at the speed of government, right? So as mentioned, like it's been eight years since they announced a uh, competition for new algorithms that are designed to be quantum resistant. And we got the first notification that the finalists were approved back in 2022. So two years to get these things uh, over the finish line. Now you'll note that we mentioned uh, there's Kyber, Dilithium and Sphinx. The fourth one, Falcon, probably won't be finalized until later in the year. Um, there's a little bit more that has to go on there. But as everyone knows, because you all watched Sneakers with Robert Redford back in the 90s, right? Um, the short version of this is that the way the cryptography works now is that you multiply two prime numbers together, you get the big number, and then they use that as the basis for everything because it's very difficult to find the two prime numbers that make that number, unless you have a very accurate quantum computer, in which case it can factor all prime numbers instantly and be able to figure out what's going on. The way that lattice cryptography works, and I'm going to be very short on this because I kid you not, there is a 121 page beginner's introduction to lattice cryptography, is that it picks a random point on a grid and it calculates a whole bunch of vectors off of that grid. And then it only it knows where it started to figure out where it was actually going. And that may sound like interesting math on a two dimensional page, but imagine it in 400 different dimensions with all the different ways that it can do that. And that's why it's quantum resistant is because even though a quantum computer can do certain mathematical calculations instantaneously, doing those kinds of calculations where it requires second or third or fourth order building is still reasonably secure because it could still take decades or centuries for it to be able to figure that out. I'm sure eventually we'll solve that problem. By making these FIP standards, what the uh, NIST people are basically saying now is if you want to have ultra secure data, you need to start using quantum resistant encryption algorithms. And that was one of the things that we actually got a, a, a quote from DigiCert on. I, and I'll be the first person to tell you, I had no idea that quantum resistant encryption was even a thing until I went to Black Hat back in 2019. And I actually sat down with some of the folks from DigiCert who are very good when it comes to all of this encryption stuff. And basically what they're saying is right now, quantum computers are small, they're custom and bespoke, but eventually they're gonna hit that that point where they are powerful enough to be able to do this. As soon as they get to that point, all bets are off because now anything that you've ever sent that was stored in an encrypted format can now be attacked with quantum computers and that information can be figured out. So think about all of the things that you have encrypted with digital key cryptography or public key cryptography is now vulnerable to attack the minute that happens. It's almost like uh, in Terminator 2 when Skynet becomes self-aware what's going to happen. I think that this is a good step forward. I am very glad that the research that was showing that maybe lattice cryptography was vulnerable to quantum uh, attacks was actually found to have a massive flaw that that caused it to look more, more vulnerable than it really was. Because this means that we get a few years of breathing room before we have to do all this all over again, which might be time for the people at NIST to learn how to name things. Make it exciting, folks. Think marketing. You could have done a whole deal around like sending out really cool crystals and things like that. And instead you gave them numbers. So yeah, get, get some marketing folks over there, folks.